Our next speaker is Craig Williams. Um, he's Kent Asian, Kent State Extension. He's going to talk about demonstrations and tours for government officials and extension on animal mortality management. So what I want to talk about is, is a little bit of a background of a, an event like this um, and how to put it together and then also a, a touch base on what had happened in Lancaster two years ago which is an event similar to this. Yeah, that's it. And um, give you some background. Some of it's an encouragement that you can do this in your own state and our government officials, our EPA people, um, in Pennsylvania, like our DEP people, they really enjoy getting a meeting together where they can get to go see something. Uh, those of us in, in extension or NRCS or whatever, we tend to have the ability to help put that together, relationships with farmers, and uh, you know, do some demos. And there's a lot that goes together in cooperation for that. So it's a little bit of an encouragement talk on um, you can do this or you can you know be involved in one of these in your state so there's two things i'm going to show you a background on what happened in uh, this symposium which was uh, now close to two years ago a year and a half ago in lancaster it has moved around the country much like the waste for work has moved around the country which is a great opportunity and i'm going to show you a little bit of background of building a pile that you could use for a demonstration and uh, in this case, where there was 11 universities and four government officials, including um, Homeland Security and uh, USDA APHIS involved in putting this together. So a lot of communication, a lot of conferencing, a lot of networking to put something like this on. Um, plus, you know, the number of contributors, uh, exhibitors, um, exhibitors that come to the event. And they're all part of it. And the website is still up, animalmortmanage.org. Manage, so the data is still there. Huge, huge thank you to Michigan State and Megan, who was the conference services person, because you need them to run all the background and registration and handouts and, and make sure the speakers come and things like that. All right. So this is who was involved. Um, we actually had some international people come, guy from Canada. You know, and, and so we had some a great team. Um, it kind of was set up like a why you should come, and then you kind of picked your events. And there was actual reviewed papers and posters, um, very similar to what happens here at Waste Worth. We had educational activities, and then we had sponsor time. Um, and then we also had, um, you know, a tour issue. And I want to highlight a little bit on the tours. We had an international panel because there were some things happening. And this also had happened right after the Iowa uh, AI outbreak. And so we were a little concerned about it becoming an AI conference. And we didn't let it become that. But there was great feedback of people on the ground um, and how they had to deal with that in, in Iowa. So that was a, a, a timely discussion especially when we got into some of this because there were some people from other countries who had dealt with outbreaks and they would tell about their experience. So tremendous networking. Our basic uh, deal was a three and a half day, day one tours, day two and three general sessions, and day three going to do demonstrations outside again, which you always wrestle with any conference, doesn't matter what subject it is, of inside-outside time, all right? And from a participant standpoint, it's almost our job to give them some outdoor time to make your conference better. And then we actually wrapped up with a, a wrap-up tabletop exercise of, of emergency planning. So that was kind of how we had handled that. But we wrestled with first day tour, all right? And uh, just a real great, quick breakdown on, on who had come. So what I wanted to show you was this is why they wanted to attend. And it's a unique, interesting schematic, but some came for disposal, a lot came for the emergency side, okay? We didn't tend to have a lot of emergency management um, type of people there, but a lot of people came for the emergency 
you know, side. And it was a conference very similar to this, two days of conference sessions, and then we started doing tours, all right? The first day was tours. I want to talk a little bit about tour setup. In our, everybody can do their tours however you want. There's a huge delay, uh, dilemma between tours by dairy, beef, poultry, or do you do tours by subject and cover dairy, beef, and poultry on each tour, you know? And it's a, a management of how you want your participants to interact. In this case, um, we were going to do a number of different subjects on each tour, and then they would go in different directions, but all tours had one theme, which was mostly biosecurity. All right, and I'll show you how we did that. Um, this is a little different way to do it, but we use Google Maps for planning the tours. The other issue with this is I had to send a copy to Dale in Michigan, or maybe send a copy to Josh. Nobody knows where Lancaster is, you know. They don't know what I'm talking about when I'm saying we gotta go up here. And whoever is in charge of the tours, we could share the Google Maps across all committee members. Just a little unique technology thing, worked pretty well. The bus companies put their own routes together, but we gave them where we wanted to go. And we could talk about timing because everybody, every tour had to get back to the same place to eat, which is a, you know, a problem. So we did three farm and industry tours. All tours had biosecurity, an industry a aspect, and a farm aspect, and took away the poultry, beef, dairy, horse subject, all right, because they covered kind of any, any industry. Um, and in this case, all tours included a commercial truck wash to talk about full trucks being washed, biosecurity between turkey farms, um, trucks that are dropping off things at the sale barn and then going to a commercial wash station or um, in one place, the one company owned their own <coughs> truck wash for all their poultry trucks between barns. So that was our common theme in this case. We put truck wash on every tour. Um, we tried to look at some real working industries you know, real working places. I want to back up just a second. This happened to be the largest sail barn east of the Mississippi, which is the New Holland Sail Barn. Um, on Easter, they'll run more than 3,000 goats through there, and a lot of those goats are coming from Texas. So you have a, about four of these people are from, let's say, a veterinary <laughs> services background, and all kind of red flags go up on biosecurity. because the animals are just coming from everywhere. And they're doing hogs and beef sale at the same place. You know, so it's a very, very interesting place. Um, and then we talked about demonstrations, and you need to have a place, like we saw here two days ago, a research farm, a place you can have a demonstration. We happen to have the Landisville site. We are able to do a lot of the same demonstrations that you might see, but we are able to put that on a university grounds or some type of grounds that we could own. And in this case, um, we would clean work with Clean Harbors, who was involved in some of the AI outbreak. We did a, a typical composting pile here. I'm gonna talk about this, and this would have been a typical foaming demonstration. <coughs> um, one of the things is we would actually buy our materials. We actually bought our carbon, bought our carcasses for this demonstration, which was totally different than some of the other work I've done where you just asked a guy if he had a dead cow, can I use it? We are actually purchasing animals for the demonstration. And actually made it a lot cleaner. Really made the, the deal a lot cleaner. So I wanna talk about setting up for a meeting where you would maybe open a pile for your government people or your DEP people and your goal was to show a pile in process and backing up from that. So in this case, we, be, we built a pile that would be 34 days old when we opened it in, in the end of this conference. So that meant by August 25th, you know, we had to have this pile built. And in this case, we did three windrow piles of 10 pigs each. We did some mixtures of wood chips, part dairy manure, part waste feed. And uh, we tried to do some, you know, cubic yard measurements. And this was delivered to the site and we built the pile, okay? So it was not a building exercise as, as much as it was an opening up exercise but we had PowerPoints for everybody ahead of time to know exactly what we had done, all right? So we showed them what we had done, all right? 
This is our pile that's two foot deep. Um, I want you to view this site circle right here in the barn because we're going to use this view later in a couple minutes. But this was the pile, three of them, one, two, three, right there. We would actually purchase the hogs. So these were spent hogs, down hogs, hogs that were not going to survive the system. You know, it was very clean. We bought the hogs. He sold them to us for weight and brought them to us. All right, and it actually made a very clean operation for this part. We built the pile, we covered it with five dumps on top, tried to measure as much as we could on building the pile, our top cover, and we finished at about three and a half feet. So that, that thing was about like this tall. Then come tour day, we showed some of these slides in like a poster form, telling them that what we're gonna open is 34 days old. All right, and trying to get them to know a time frame. In this case, we used also a litter turner in the issue of rotating a pile with pigs in it. It's not a common use of those two machines together, but we also demonstrated something you might want to use or possibly could use in a different format, and it actually worked in this case pretty good. So we had uh, Zimmerman talked about the, the compost turner. It's an ABI compost turner or litter turner. But then in this case, all you're seeing we're doing is rolling the pile. So we would roll the pile, a couple of them we would open beforehand, show the pig, and then we'd show how we could roll the pile to, to aerate it, move it over. And all it is, the big auger moves over. And then the pile would be opened up and we would talk about it. So one of the unique things is, if I back up just a couple slides real quick. This grinder mixture over here was going on with cow, full cows grinding and wood chips and hay bales, old hay bales. One part, one part, one part. All right. And it would come out the grinder mixer and go into a windrow much like this. This is what we would have. So what we did here, the unique thing about me going past this place is I could go back to it 10 months later then. All right, so we took both our piles and we put them together. This would have been at the end of September when we left. And this is what it looked like six to 10 months later. And we still have some bones in there, but everything had been recomposted and was very clean. All right. At this point, they took the pile, we moved it to the edge of the, of the field because this field was going to go back into part of the crop production on that research farm. This picture right here, I was at this place on Wednesday last week for a Pennsylvania Department of Ag AI training and I went out to this field and it's growing barley. What do you expect to see right in this area? This would be a year and a half, two years later. So the pile is over here to the left and the barley comes across like this and then it gets a lot taller. taller and then hops right back down. So we have a tall windrow right down through here of where the barley is at least 10 inches taller from the nutrients from the manure, cattle manure that was in the windrow. Um, the wood chips leach out some, some from the animals. I'd say we are very carbon heavy, all right? But we had some materials move out of that pile and that barley is taking that up, all right? And, and we have grown up. Luckily, the barley plots go from here this way, and this is the guest row, all right? So we didn't mess up any of their barley plots, you know, barley trials. But you can definitely see that we still have some ground activity, you know, and that has been worked there. And then all of this material, which has been composted now for a year, uh, more than a year, is being used on the research farm. So it's worked out really well. The, the story I would encourage you to do is if you can build a pile that you can open up two months, one month, three months later, you know, and you want to talk about the mortality composting issue, all of us could do that on a, on a situation. And I believe the participants like to see as much as building the pile, they like to see an end result or a partial done result as a good activity. The other side of this is these meetings, much like the one we're in right now, just as an encouragement, take a tremendous amount of uh, committee support, you know, cooperation, 
and I think we just should be realizing how much they do. But they're really a great activities, and the talk before that I had done was a direct out, output of seeing a barn from attending another committee meeting, you know, in Michigan, and then using that in another state. So, you know, that kind of just highlights the networking. So I encourage you, you can still get all of the handouts at the Animal Mort uh, website. Um, much like Waste to Worth, we'll put their handouts up on, on and I encourage you to do that. But also don't be afraid to set up a, a meeting or a pile because there's some great ways and great interaction that can still happen from that. So turn it over to you. We got five more minutes. Um, any questions for uh, Greg? We talked about having questions and then anybody else for questions for Josh or anybody. So, Tom? So with um, the bigger symposium two years ago, was there any screening of guests or attendees from a biosecurity standpoint, survey-wise? Or... You mean where they had been coming to the meeting? Yeah. Um, there was, um, I believe there was a clause, something about, you know, if you had come from a certain country and be aware of, of where you had been. I don't believe, I don't know if it was a true screening. Um, Tom Glanville, I think, had been talked a little bit about that. And we had had visited some, uh, one of the farms that we went to visit was a dairy farm that had chicken barns on the farm. So we actually never did any true chicken barn visits in this tour situation because it was right after Iowa but in Lancaster County there are a tremendous amount of chicken barns on dairy farms which really opens up the question of how's that dairy going to keep shipping milk if that chicken barn got shut down which is another whole discussion of you know secure milk and all of that um, but I don't believe I think we put in a clause about being aware of not being on a farm two days before you come to the conference or something like that. I don't know, Josh, if you remember any other. I don't think we had a survey, but. Just a notice. A security clause. Yeah. Um, what we did do um, as a outreach was we did a, uh, an extra job of trying to wash boots before we loaded buses. We, we actually put, we bought um, foot pads and loaded them and you'd walk through them, you know, which was actually a lot of work for maybe overkill on the tour, but we tried to do extra work on doing that. And we had provided Tyvek and boots if anybody wanted them. But we decided we would load every, every time we loaded the bus, we'd go through the foot bath, you know. Um, you know, and we weren't really in the barns, but it was one more step. It also drove home the biosecurity effort, so. I'm just curious about the PMR mix or Yeah, we were. Did you have any negative feedback on that? I assume when that comes out, it's pretty. So that was that was done by um, Enviro Processor, who brought that in from can from uh, Canada. Um, we had bought downed animals for that. So in this case, we had actually purchased them. They were going to a renderer to start with. You know, so that was kind of the relationship there. It was a, a pretty good eye opener from carcass reduction, things like that. Um, the process, the product coming out, you know, was cut up fairly well. The hides were cut up fairly well. And they wanted to demonstrate that it's a one part uh, wood chips, one part hay, one part animal, you know, type of recipe. Um, we talked about that in the committee part. But Enviro Processor was one of our exhibitors, and then they brought that for for the demo. So I don't I don't think we got a whole lot of negative pushback, but it was definitely on the edge, you know, for doing a demo. Um, and in that one picture was a horse, so you know that could have gone over the edge a little. So I don't know if you were you were there. I don't. The end product coming out was this looked like compost, you know, mix. Yeah. You didn't see. So it wasn't like blood was oozing out of no. equipment or anything. No. And they, and they said if we put in a thousand pound, because what they were trying to do is a thousand pound of wood chips, say it's a thousand pound cow, and we had large square bales there so they could grab a thousand pounds of, of hay. Um, you know, and it was basically a vertical 
TMR mixer is what it was with side knives. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you were doing several demonstrations side by side, right? So what was the most challenging one and what was the best received? Okay, so um, there was a couple others that were in the barn. Um, Dr. Wolfgang actually did demonstrations on using a pneumatic air gun for euthanasia and he had frozen skulls. That one was really, I think, got a lot of good traction, you know, because people have not seen that or are scared of air guns. That one was good. Um, the foam, de the defoamer's been done a lot. Um, it's, it's probably one of the most challenging one because as soon as air comes up, wind comes up, our foam was moving across the rest of the demos you know because it blows through there and it's still not like being in the turkey barn you know so i mean i've been through a lot of foamers foam demos and you know they're cool to see but we probably should do a demo in the barn now because doing it in the tyvek out in the field is still not really the same thing um and uh just last week we had a pin break on our reel so we could put the foamer out but it wouldn't pull the cart back so that ended up being a real negative bust because you know the unit didn't work, you know, and they got it fixed. But um, so that's probably one of the more challenging ones. Is is the foamer can give you a lot of problems. Um, you got to always make sure you have new foam and things like that. So what is the chemical? The it's it's a uh, it's a soap. It's the same foam they often use on uh, the airport runways for firefighting foam, and then it just dissipates down in. So yeah, uh, H something, H three something. I kind of Greg Martin's our turkey guy, chicken guy, so I kind of let him know more about. I do the large animals, and he does the chickens. But I, I would say that's probably the most challenging because you get a wind blow, and it picks that foam up where we were and it would blow it across the rest of the the demos you know and then you have a, a logistics problem going on there the other problem here would have been if, if we had had a rain event um, that would have really hampered our demos um, we only had two demos the the pneumatic air gun and uh, we had another one inside which happened to deal with mapping or something there was the only two that would have survived a rain event. You know, I mean, you could have done some of the others, but have been really rough on on the participants. So. All right. Well, let's give credit. Yeah, thank again. you.